Hi, I'm Rick Rines, the Senior Rabbi at Temple Sinai in Denver. This week, we have two Torah portions, Bahar and Bechukotai, the last two Torah portions of the book of Leviticus. And Bahar has only really one chapter, chapter 25 of the book of Leviticus, but it covers so much material that is so crucial for us. It covers the social injustices, environmental injustices, economic injustices, and inequality. It talks about a Shemitah year. Every seven years, we shall allow the land to lay fallow. Don't plant once every seven years so that the earth can be renewed. Don't always take the environment, take advantage of it, use it for our own purposes without acknowledging that the environment too is fragile and we have to give back to it. And we have seen what happens when we don't pay attention for the environmental consequences of our use and misuse of that land. Deuteronomy revisits the whole concept of Shemitah, saying not only should you allow the environment, the land to lay fallow and to not reap harvest from that year, but you should also cancel debts once every seven years. And it, together with this week's Torah portion, addresses economic inequality, economic injustices, that there are people who suffer a crushing debt. Now, also in chapter 25 of the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter, uh, the Torah portion, Bahar, it says, you shall not charge interest to someone. Have an interest-free loan. But there has to be some kind of compensation, right? And he said, well, the problem is the debt increases and the interest can make it overwhelming for a person. What happens? They have to sell their land holding. They have to sell their most precious possessions, even themselves, because the Torah portion says there's um, a debtor might go into servitude in order to pay off his debts, an indentured servant. And the economic injustices, the inequalities that come from exorbitant interest rates, from setbacks, economic uh, setbacks that happen because we had bad breaks. The rains came too heavy or they didn't come at all, or uh, the locusts came and ate up your crop. How is the farmer going to survive? So this week's Torah portion addresses those inequalities and says there should be every seven years an addressing of this situation. It also says you count seven years times seven, and on that 50th year, there's a jubilee in which everyone who had to sell their land holding in order to pay off debts, that land would return to them to give each family, each uh, group, uh, each clan, a sense that they could restart their lives, a fresh start for them. That addresses the inequality, saying it's not just paying off your debt right now. If you don't have land, then you're going to go in debt again. We have to address the root causes of that inequality, of that social and economic injustice, give them their land back, let them have a fresh start to, to make a go of it. The second Torah portion that we have is Bechukotai, and it begins with blessings and curses, saying that in the ideal world, there will be blessings. If you do address the environmental uh, inequalities and injustices, the social injustices, the economic injustices, there will be blessings. And it, uh, it expresses this wonderful phrase. It says, You shall eat your fill with bread. You'll dwell securely in your land. I will grant peace in your land. You shall be able to lie down, relax, and none will make you afraid. That's the blessing that everyone will be able to have enough food to eat and be able to enjoy life with a sense of dignity and respect and security, right? Well, that's the ideal. That's unfortunately not something we've been able to achieve in our lifetime or any other uh, generation previous. We speak of a tikkun olam. We speak of a hope that we will be able to transform our world. But right after the blessings, it mentions the curses. It mentions the consequences as, of us not addressing the problems with the environment, uh, the social inequalities and the economic inequalities. 
and we suffer as a society. We suffer because we know that good human beings are put into a situation of racism and of poverty and of starvation uh, that um, is heartbreaking. I had today, this is Thursday as I'm recording this, the graduation of my youngest son uh, from the University of Colorado in Boulder. And that's why I got a lot of sun on my face as we sat out and uh, not in a big stadium, but we sat on the porches. I was at Hillel uh, with, with uh, Jacob and the family. And the commencement speakers all spoke of that idea that this generation is entering um, the workforce or entering the next stage of their life, that they will be able to make the positive changes. But they also address what they faced. They have faced the, the racism uh, in society. They have faced the economic and the environmental issues. And so a lot of the young people are thinking, what is this world that I'm coming into? Will I have a chance to tikkun olam, to help correct or to make the world a better place, right? And those are questions hanging over the heads of all the graduates. Tomorrow night at Temple Sinai, uh, Friday night, we have our confirmation class. 16 year old uh, students who are wonderful. They continued on after bar bat mitzvah. They're gonna stand up on a bimah. They're gonna lead the service. They're gonna read from Torah. They're gonna teach, but they too are gonna be facing the questions. What kind of world are they inheriting? And here's the thing. We are, are right to point out the social injustices, the economic injustices, the environmental concerns, the racism, the antisemitism, the sexism, the homophobia, the hatred that is all over the, the world and so much of it is amplified on the social media. They will have good reason to be concerned about what's gonna to happen to them. Will they have a fair chance? The last thing we say when we conclude reading the uh, book of Leviticus, we'll raise the Torah up. What do we say? We say, chazak, chazak, benit chazik. Be strong, be strong and have courage. Let it be that teachers, parents, friends, that we'll look at the graduates, we'll look at the confirmands, we'll look at the young people after all they've been through in this monstrously weird and awful year of the COVID pandemic and all of the trepidation that they have and that they've been, they've been dealing with, let's also give that encouragement. Let's say, you know what? The kids are all right. The kids have the skills. The kids have these experiences. Now we believe in you. We believe in you. Go forth, have good courage, be strong, and go forth with a sense that you're not going to correct all of the inequalities out there. You're not going to fix the world permanently, but we do most certainly, we do believe that you'll make it a lot better. God bless you and Shabbat Shalom.